Well, hello there, friends. Fantastic recipe today. A stuffed zucchini. Amazing recipe. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell. Stay tuned. We're going to make them together right now. Okay, friends. Well, this is not exactly a quick recipe, friends, but it's so amazing. I promise you, it's so amazing. You gotta, you gotta try to do it, okay? Yeah, basically, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put kind of like a meat sauce, a bolognese sauce, not exactly a bolognese. I can see all the Italian going, oh no, it's no bolognese. Call it whatever you want, some kind of a, a meat ragu, except we're gonna do it with sausage. So, I got a few things going on. Let me stop talking and let me stop working for, I got bacon in here. You know, bacon is always number first. Always, always bacon. Okay, very important, right? Um, uh, I mean, we always say onion is number one. Yeah, it's number one, but it's number two to bacon. Number two to bacon and number two to sausage. So I got, uh, man, now, now all of a sudden I'm adding things, right? But you got to, you got to saute the sausage first, okay? So look, I got the sausage over here, Italian sausage, right? I'm going to put them in there, whole sausage, but I took the skin off. And for those of you that have never done this, it's the easiest thing in the world to do, right? You take, you cut the sausage like this, right? Because I see so many shoemakers doing it the wrong way. Then I decide, and then you flip it on the other side, you take that little skin right there, and you pull it right off. Now, of course... The cameras are running and not going very good, right? Yeah, it never does. Here we go. Right? Okay, so now, boom. Take this out. Turn the heat on. It'll help. Instead of turning the heat off, turn the heat on. And then what we're going to do, friends, we're going to saute the sausage. But not just saute the sausage. We're going to break it up. Okay? For those of you that have seen my um, bolognese sauce, uh, you can check it out. It's a really, really good recipe. And uh, so I'm using the fat from the bacon, and then I'm going to use the fat from the sausage instead of olive oil, which I love olive oil, but uh, to saute my, uh, my onion. All right, but first, the most important thing, friends, we need to break this up, break it up, break it up, break it up in little pieces, you know. I, do, I have done a few recipes already showing you this technique, but some of you may be new to the channel. Welcome. We've had so many new people. It's fabulous. Fabulous, 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 fabulous. And um, uh, we're breaking it all up, and um, we're sauteing. We're going to get the Maya reaction. That's the caramelization of the protein and get this beautiful golden color. And But you got to break it up. Now, what I find is a lot of uh, 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 chefs that work in, uh, in, in restaurants don't want to take the time to do this. This is a very time-consuming deal, right? You notice, look, look at it, bam, 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 right? Very time-consuming deal. So what they do is they saute it a little bit, and then they take it and put it in a food processor, chop it up very fine. Mamma mia, don't ever do that. Don't ever cut it up with a knife either. You need, you need the, 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 the crannies or whatever you call it. You need the shapes. You can't have a cut straight. Because it doesn't feel the same in the mouth. I'm telling you, it's all about the texture, friends. Okay, we talk about this so often. We're going to put this in here. We're going to give it a rest for a minute so I can take a break. Mise en place. Very simple, right? Um, in a minute, I'm going to show you how to do the zucchini. But first, I want to get with this. Because if I try to do two things at once, all of a sudden, one thing is going to require my attention more than the other. And I don't want to do that. I got onion right there. I got one big onion. I got big onion. Let me tell you. Look at the big onion. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, look at this. Look at this. We have an organic farm that raised onion here in, in Florida. Beautiful forests in Florida. So expensive. Eh? Mamma mia. Uh, uh, I made, look at it. One onion. That's what that is. One onion. One onion. I'm telling you. So look. We're going to saute this. We got one onion. We got um, about eight ounces of mushrooms. Then I, no, no, it's not eight ounces, it's six ounces. What's wrong with me? Uh, six ounces of mushroom that I slice. You don't like mushroom, don't put them in. Don't worry. It's cooking. You know, people, I, I get fabulous comments, though. People said, oh, you know what? I didn't have rosemary, I didn't do the recipe. Oh, if you had a thyme, it'd be great. If you had a basil, it'd be fine. You don't need to follow everything. But it's just cooking, you're not rocket science. Okay? I say it all the time. We're not sending in the moon. You, do, you notice what I'm doing also, folks? Scrape the bottom of the pot every so often. I got a spatula 
and I scrape the bottom of the pot. I don't want it to burn. Okay? Because it will burn, I promise you, if you don't do this. Look, look, look. Saute, saute, saute. Now let's put the onion, and I'll tell you about the maison place. Now the onion, they need to caramelize too. So they're in, they're in good company now. The onion are really happy now, boy. They got, um, they got you know, you, you want to be a good cook, get into the ingredient, friends. Get into it. Don't just do it. You know what I'm saying? You just get into it. Yeah, it, it's so much more fun, isn't it? It really is more fun. Because now all of a sudden you, you you have a better result. That's all there is to it. All right, let's wait to come. Let's, let's talk about the mise en place. I got um, uh, the mushroom, six ounces of sliced mushrooms. I got some bell peppers cut very small, red and green. You only can find one color, put one color. Doesn't matter. I got... Thyme, fresh thyme, and rosemary. Also, friends, make sure you shake the bottom of the pot. Always, 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 always. Don't let it stick. Make sure your pot is in the middle, too. Not like I am just did. All of a sudden, I'm looking. I'm going, hold a minute. Why is this side over there sticking? That's because it's not in the middle. See, this side not sticking. So, uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, 50 years in the kitchen. You think I know to put a pot in the middle, right? No, 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 no. All right, so... Thyme and rosemary. You can put whatever you want. Remember, for those of you that use the dry herbs, you can use the dry herbs. Nothing wrong with that. Just use half. Just use half because otherwise it's too much. Okay, so whatever I put in the recipe, cut in half. Tomato puree. There's very thick tomato puree. I got a can of, um, of uh, uh, La Valle tomatoes. Just a whole can of it. We're going to put them in there. I got a little parsley for the end and I got a garlic. Okay, and when do we put the garlic? Just before you put the tomatoes, all right? So look, we're getting good, though. I don't know if you can see, but I'm looking good. I'm looking really good right now. You see? All right, so here's what we're going to do now. We're going to put the mushroom, and we're going to get rid of the water. And again, now I know, most of you know that, but what would help me get rid of the water in the mushroom? Because if you noticed so far, I haven't put any what? Any Salt, exactly. And for this, we're going to use, uh, we can use a mushroom salt, we can use a, a garlic salt, we can use a, um, but I'm going to use a mushroom salt. I got this beautiful porcini mushroom salt, or we could use a, a, a garlic salt that I have. But our garlic salt is just roasted garlic and Mediterranean sea salt. Okay, it's not full of other stuff in it. So, salt will help us draw the moisture, so we're going to put it in there, right? And we're going to continue saute. Now, at this point, we want to be gentle. We want to make sure the mushroom... Now, so I'm using the spatula so I don't destroy everything. Oh, man, this pot is hot. Whew. And the pot I'm using, my friends, is a, an Amor cast iron pot. And, uh, and they're fabulous because you can pop them in the oven. I love them. This pot right there, folks, this got to be 50 years old. They're like brand new. You buy one of those, uh, I'd leave you and I'd leave your children. Okay? They last forever and ever and ever. You don't have to worry about it. They don't bend. They don't do nothing to happen. Yeah, well, once in a while, you may, uh, you may drop it on the floor because it's so heavy. But it's really worth it. You see the base? We're looking good, right? You like the base, my friend? You see the mushrooms are starting to release the water. In the meantime... I don't want to stop the zucchini because if I start showing you how to do the zucchini, that's going to take time. And then I'm going to rush. And if I rush, then, um, then, you're like, then you, don't, you learn. You don't learn. The whole idea of this channel, friends, is for you to learn some of the stuff that I've learned in the last 15 years in the kitchen. So it's very exciting for me to teach you. And if some of you know already, oh, we already know that. Yeah, okay, cool. Then good for you. You must be a very good cook. Send me an invitation. I come for dinner. <laughs> but for people that don't know, look, look, we're looking good. You like it? I like it. I think it's looking beautiful, okay? So now, now we can put the garlic. Well, let's wait for the garlic. You know what? Let's saute the peppers really quick. Those peppers don't require. Look, they're small. They're small. I cut them small. You know, I, I am in the process of taping a video to show you how to cut all that stuff. So I'm doing it. And, uh, and um, so, look, look at this. We're looking good. We're looking good. By the way, when I make these, friends, I make extra. I make extra because even if I don't need it all to stuff my zucchini, I'll freeze it. You can freeze this for 17 years. 
Minimum. Yeah, no, I don't know, 17 years. Some people, I got a comment, they say, can you really please for 17 years? I don't know, I've never tried, but it's just an idea. Um, no, no, you can freeze it for a long time. So you, ever, you get some pasta, you put this in the pasta, forget about it. Uh, forget about it. That's my New York accent. You like it? How you doing? See, I could pass from New York, could I? Not really, I'm telling you. They're laughing over there. I know they're laughing, but I'm, I really, I think I'm doing my New York accent pretty good. How you doing? Okay, look, um, thyme and rosemary. Thyme and rosemary, put basil, put whatever you want. I love it, I just love it. I just love it. Now, now I'm good, I didn't forget nothing for once. We're gonna put a little garlic, chopped garlic, and this is a, just the chopped garlic. We buy the garlic and we chop it up, we put it in here. I didn't put any oil in here, but eventually I put some oil and I freeze it. it stays in the freezer for a long time. All right, so look. When do we, how long do we cook the garlic for? Let me put some cracked black pepper in here. Oh, not too much, because the sausage is spicy. My sausage is very spicy. This, if you could be here to smell right now, you would say, when do we eat? I'm telling you. We're going to put a little bit of the tomato uh, puree. So that's going to give us some nice body. And we're going to put the can of uh, the tomatoes. Okay, this is a 28 cans of tomatoes. 28 ounce can of tomato. I did not forget nothing. I'm gonna reduce the heat. And I'm gonna cook this slowly, my friends. This is gonna cook slowly. Gotta keep an eye on it now. For a good 45 minutes to an hour. Okay? We're gonna cook it very slowly. So reduce the heat. Reduce the heat. Get yourself a good wooden spoon. And every so often, mix it up. That's all you got to do, friends. Pretty simple, right? And this, we're going to put inside the peppers. Now, I'm going to go and get the peppers because I can relax. Not the peppers, the zucchini peppers. Does it look like a pepper to you? No, it doesn't. It looks like a zucchini. So, this, I'm going to show you. See what I did right there, friends? I emptied them. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's very simple. Few rules, then you got to remember. Sometimes you buy a zucchini, and they crook it. They, don't, they got a bend on it, right? So we want to make sure, see this, this one has a little bit of a bend. See right there? It's going over there, right? Just a little bit, if you notice it, right? Right, just a little bit, right? So if you can find them, it's very difficult. When I look for produce at the store, they think I'm nuts, but I'm like going like this and going like this. <laughs> they must think I'm a nut. <laughs> That's okay, I don't care. But it's true, you see like this one right there, going left. And if you turn it this way, <laughs> it's going right. Well, it's very scientific. So what you want to do, you want to make sure the bend is underneath, underneath. Because if you cut, if you put the bend underneath, see like right here? This is where the bend is, right? When I cut it in half, I'll have two perfect half. If I don't do that, if I let it go this way and I try to cut it in half, guess what? One side is going to go to the left and the other side is going to go nowhere because... You see what I mean? <laughs> Some of you are like, these guys are nuts. That's okay. So we're going to cut the top, a little bit of the top. Don't go much. You just can't eat the top and the bottom. So you got a little bit. Don't go out there cutting too much. Just a little bit, right? Let's find the bend again. All right, the bend is here. So now look what I do. I take a knife. Now be careful with this because that knife is going to go easy left and right up. It really is. So you have to pay attention to what you're doing so you get yourself two perfect half. And trust me, I've done thousands of those, so I know what I'm talking about. If you're not paying attention, your knife is going to go left or right, and you're not going to be able to control it. Let me see how am I doing over there. I'm good. Everything's good. All right. Oh, by the way, never cover it. Eh? Never cover the tomato sauce whenever you're making a tomato, anything with tomato. Don't cover it. Let the acidity come out, okay? Okay, look, guys. I got a melon ball cutter. You can get those anywhere, okay? The, any store you can get it. Target got it. You can get it at Target next is next 7-Eleven. So, <laughs> look, 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 look. You're going to go right there. You're going to make a little ball right here. Don't go too deep now. Now, I'm lucky because this guy's got two sides. He's got a big one and a small one. So on that side, I'm going to use a small one. Don't go too deep, okay? Don't go too deep, right? And then you're going to go like this. You're going to take and you're going to use your finger as a guide. You see? Look, look. You go like this. You use your finger as a guide. 
and you empty all the seeds. You see? Now look how simple that is. Now I'm going to take the small one right there, and then I'm going to pick up the big one. Okay? If you can get one that's two sides, okay, otherwise don't worry about it, okay? I don't want to make it more complicated than what it is. And of course, there's seeds everywhere. But look, you see how simple that is, friends? You see? You notice, everything we do is simple, eh? A child could do this. I think there's some on the floor. There you go, go underneath. So I don't step on it. So what else do you do now? You take this guy right there. I'm going to put some beautiful uh, garlic olive oil. You can put any, either Tuscan olive oil, just plain olive oil would be perfectly fine, okay? But I got the beautiful garlic olive oil that I love so much, and so many of you have got it. It's such a beautiful product. Look, you're brushing. Oh, mamma mia, I forgot, forgot something. I for <laughs> you know I'm going to forget something. Have you noticed if you put something round like this, it doesn't stand, right? It moves. So what you do, you take the mandolin or your knife, and you go slowly. Now I put the oil, I better be careful. And you go slowly, and you cut just enough so it stands flat. You see? See, otherwise it don't stay. See, it moves. But if you do this like that, wait, you take it. Be careful now. It's dangerous. Cut the bottom of it, and look. You won't even know. You see? Put a salt and pepper in there, my friends. Salt and pepper. I already put the other one. I already did the other one. And I put a little pepper in there. Right? We're going to pop them in the oven. Right? That's it. We're going to pop them in the oven. We're going to cook them until they're tender. And that's it. that could take a good uh, 20, 15, 20 minutes at 375. We're going to pop them in the oven when they're tender, and then we're going to put them aside. And then when this is cooked, and it has an opportunity to chill a little bit, it's easier we're going to finish the dish just a little bit so it's easier to handle. Okay? And that's it, my friends. So when this is cooked, when this is finished, I'll come back and we finish the dish together. All right? So I'll be back in a few minutes. I'm just going to pop them in the oven now. I got the oven set up at 375. All right? I'll be back when the whole thing is done and we can put it together. Okay, friends. Well, look how much of the uh, uh, sausage and bacon and goodies we have left. You see, when I do a, a show like this, folks, I do for this, but I always make extra because we're going to eat all this. Let me tell you, this is like amazing. Even if you don't want to eat it right now, you can freeze it, remember. Um, but this right there, take some bugatini, some uh, orecchiette, some uh, penne pasta, and uh, forget about it. That, that's going to be amazing. Let me tell you, with a little parmigiano vagina, oh, baby, amazing, right? now. So, so don't... This is a, a, you know, because when you make it, you make it a small batch or a big batch, same amount of work, basically, almost, right? I mean, a little more chopping maybe, but the, the cooking time, everything is the same. Might as well make a lot, you know? And, and if you don't want, like I can say, freeze it. Give it to the neighbor. Make the neighbor happy, okay? So now, look, guys, I stuffed the zucchini. I wanted to show you also, when you take the zucchini out, I want you to check it, take a toothpick and check it to make sure it's soft, okay? And it should be like, see, look. It should be kind of soft, okay, when they're done, okay? Otherwise, they're not going to cook. You got, they got to have them soft. So you go like this with a toothpick. Oop, make sure you go all the way through. Not too much, but enough, okay? So they cook because you're just going to reheat them now. You're going to pop them in the oven. You're going to reheat them, right? So I, I left one of them so I can show you. All I do, basically, I take a two-spoon, right? I mean, I don't make anything fancy here. You know, there's nothing fancy about this dish, but let me tell you. <laughs> I, oh, there we go. Look at this, boy. Don't make it a mess. I always make a mess. Take a dish right there, right there. Right, right there, right? Right, pack it in, pack it in. I love this stuff. I do, I love this stuff. This, this I'm telling you, this is one of my favorite things to eat. I'm, I'm not, I mean, I love to eat. <laughs> Yeah, I love to eat. That's my issues. My doctor was telling me that they said you gotta have, you have to have uh, less sugar, less fat. I'm changing doctor. <laughs> I'm changing doctor. I'm fine. I, he's just jealous. So <laughs> uh, I'm gonna put it aside. You notice I didn't use much butter today. So you can put a cheese right there. But I made a little mornay sauce. 
little the morning sauce recipe, folks, is the one I make for the macaroni and cheese. Right over there. You can make it a morning sauce, and I add a couple of egg yolk at the end. So morning sauce or, or just cheese. And what I do is I put it in a squeeze bottle when it's still warm, right? It's to make it easier to put it on there. Otherwise, it's a mess, right? And then, and then what I do is I put it upside down so there's no air bubble, right? But then I put a plastic film there, right? So I take it right there, and you see I take the plastic right there, and then I go, ooh. And then I make a big hole in my squeeze bottle. I got all kind of different size holes, right? And then I go like this. You see? Well, <laughs> not like this, it's not coming out. But I go like this, look, look. You go like this. Now, stay kind of in the middle, friends. Because you see, when you put it in the oven, it's gonna grow, and it's gonna go on the side of it. You see? All right, so not to make the video too long and not to rush, because I hate to rush it. I'm going to finish all this. I'll come back in a second. Okay, so you put the sauce in here. Take your time to do it nice. Kind of stay away from the edge. And then you take your cheese if you want to put a little extra cheese. I got a little Parmigiano Reggiano right there. Just a little extra. And you put it on top. And then the morning sauce, you can skip the morning sauce. You can put some mozzarella cheese, Swiss cheese, ch whatever cheese you want, cheddar cheese. You know, and uh, you can skip the, the, the sauce because there's so much to do already. You know, but like I say, do it in steps, friends. Do it in step. And think about something, though, right? You made that extra sauce right there, right? That extra uh, uh, meat sauce, meat ragu, whatever you want to call it, right? You, you, you made this. So next time you want to make it, take it out of the freezer. But I recommend one thing, though. If you take it out of the freezer overnight, which is better to let it defrost, right? Like, you know you're going to make those tomorrow, right? You take it out today and put it in a strainer, in a, in a colander, and let the water from the tomato drain out. Otherwise, it's going to be a little too liquid for you, right? And then all you got to do is do the zucchini because you got the sauce made already. You see, I gave you a good tip right there. I think it's a good tip, right? My friends, we're going to put this in the oven. And when they're beautiful, I come back and I'm going to serve and I'm going to eat it. Okay, so I'll be back in a minute. Well, look at those, friends. They're beautiful, isn't it? And uh, they're going to be super hot. <laughs> so we may want to wait a little bit, right? Um, hey, somebody asked me earlier, I said, why don't you put the plastic on there? On this uh, uh, squeeze bottle there? It's because I like to put it upside down so there's no air bubble. It makes it easier. And then, then of course, you open it up. And, uh, and, you know, and, and you release the plastic, you take out the plastic, and then it, it pours right out. Otherwise, the sauce will be pouring everywhere. It's one of them tricks in the restaurant business. All right, so, friends, what I like to do is serve it with a, um, a bell pepper coulis. And you got the recipe over there. If you have never made it, you can make it a tomato coulis. You can make it, it's really simple to make. We're just going to take a little ladle in there. And, uh, and, and, and put, it, uh, put it right there. Maybe we'll put two. What do you think? Put one here, one here, and we just take a spoon, and we just make it a, a simple nothing, nothing really special, right? Boom, boom. And then we take one of those guys. Let's take the one in the middle right there. But before we take it out of there, we're going to put a little bit of the chopped parsley. And let me tell you, this is enough of one appetizer, friends. This, this is going to be enough. Beautiful appetizer. Make it two. Make it a main course. And voila, my friend. This is an amazing stuff. Zuc I was going to say pettuccine. Stuff zucchini, yeah? And look how beautiful it is. Let's look at let's, uh, let's look at the inside and, uh, and see. Let me tell you. Right there. Oh, yeah, it's still smoking. So I have to be very careful. They eat a small piece right there. Take a little coolie right there. Let me tell you, this right there. Oh. Oh, oh. It's delicious. Mm. Oh, my God. I love this dish. I, but I highly recommend you take it out. Let it rest a little bit. Don't worry about serving it right away. It's too hot. Nobody can really eat it. You got to wait until it's not so hot. Make extra, the next day you reheat them in the oven. Remember when you're reheating something? No hotter inside temperature than 145, 150 when you're reheating it. You take one of your thermometers. You take one of those thermometers right there. You know those things? 
And you'll go in, you'll reheat it at 145, 150. You can't eat it hotter than that anyway. Otherwise, you burn yourself. So what's the sense of reheating it hotter than this? Friends, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a lot of fun to make it for you. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next couple of days with another fantastic video.